Hey everybody, Physics Ninja here. I've got another problem dealing with uh, capacitors with dielectrics. So here's the problem. Uh, I have a capacitor with a dielectric that has a constant K equals to 5.4. It's held at a potential difference, so the voltage between the plates is 55 volts, and that remains constant. All right, now this is a parallel plate capacitor. Um, the capacitance is 112 picofarads. That's with the dielectric inserted. And the area of the plates I'm giving you is 96.5 centimeters squared. All right, I have a couple questions for you. How would you find the total electric field inside that dielectric? How would you find the free charge that's on the metal plates? How do you find the induced charges on the surface of this dielectric once it's inside? And maybe one last question, how would you calculate the polarization P? All right, so like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's the best way to support what I do. Okay, let's get started. All right, so this is what we have, uh, a parallel plate capacitor without a dielectric connected to a power supply. Okay, 55 volts. I insert a dielectric, shown here on the right-hand side, with a dielectric constant equal to 5.4. So I get some charge on the plates. I induce some charges on the surface of the dielectric, but I'm keeping the battery connected here, right? The voltage is fixed at 55 volts. Now we know that the uh, capacitance is 112 picofarad uh, when the dielectric is inserted. So let's look at a couple quantities. Well, let's look at the voltage, for example. V on the case without a dielectric is 55 volts. <laughs> when there is a dielectric, guess what? The voltage between the plates is 55 volts. Uh, what else do we know? We know the capacitance here is CK. Uh, the capacitance in this case, when there is no dielectric, I call it C0. Uh, this one you should know, right? It's the value when there's a dielectric divided by that dielectric constant. When you put the dielectric constant uh, inside, when you put the dielectric in, the capacitance always increases, okay? So this guy here is higher than C0 by a factor of 5.4. So that means this guy here is 112 picofarad divided by 5.4. Uh, this was 20.74 picofarads. All right. Well, let's think about um, our capacitor uh, equation, right? One that relates the charge to the voltage between the plates, okay? And the charge here is the free charge. So what do we have in this case? Well, we have Q0, which is the capacitance C0, multiplied by that voltage V, okay? Well, what do we have on this case? Here I called it Q free, that's the charge on the plates, okay? Uh, guess what? It's the capacitance. The capacitance is K multiplied by C0 and multiplied by the same voltage, the same voltage V. You can see right here that this term is what? It's exactly equal to Q0. So what does that mean? When you inserted that dielectric, right, this free charge actually increased because the voltage remained the same. So this is super important, okay, when we're going to calculate uh, the field inside this dielectric. Now, how are we going to calculate the field inside the dielectric? Well, the easiest way is to use our expression. If you know the voltage between the plates, and if you know this distance, which doesn't change, the distance between the plates, we should know that the voltage, uh, maybe we just call it V just to stick with that, our 55 volts, is equal to the field inside multiplied by the distance between the plates. All right, so this is what we need here to use to calculate um, the field inside this dielectric. Um, one thing to note, we don't know the distance yet. I haven't given you that. However, we could use our values of capacitance in order to find the distance between the plates. So that's what I'm gonna do on the next slide. All right, so if I go ahead and I plot E inside here, this is the total field has to be the same as the field on this side. The field doesn't change. Okay, uh, the way you find that, E inside, use that equation that is boxed in red, is my voltage 55 divided by D. 
All right, so how do you find D? We're gonna use our information for this capacitor. If it's a parallel plate capacitor, the formula for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is the permittivity of free space, the area of the plate divided by the separation of the plates. So right here, I can get an expression for D. So let's do some algebra right here. So how would you get D? D here equals epsilon zero A divided by that capacitance when there's no dielectric constant inside. So now we just go ahead and substitute in my electric field formula. So I have V and now I just substitute the values for D here. This is epsilon zero, the area of the plate and multiply C zero up here. Now we substitute in all the values, okay? So we have 55 volts. We have multiplied by my 20.74. Now that's picofarad, that's 10 to the minus 12. Divided by epsilon zero. Epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space, just a constant, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. And now I have to multiply that by the area. Uh, the area I gave you in the problem. Now, careful, it's in centimeters squared. So it's 96.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. All right, you put that in the calculator. And you should get a value that um, look like uh, 13,400 uh, volts per meter. Okay, so there's our first problem. How to find the field inside uh, the dielectric or the total electric field. All right, second problem is pretty straightforward. We ask for the free charge here, right? Once the dielectric is inserted, well, this is what? It's simply the capacitance, CK, multiplied by the voltage, right? And that voltage is fixed. It's the capacitance that increased. So guess what? All you have then is my 112 picofarad times 10 to the minus 12 multiplied by the 55 volts and you get the charge on the plates is approximately equal to 6.16 times 10 to the minus 9 coulomb. All right, so you can write this as 6.16 um, nanocoulomb. Let's fix that. All right, so that's the free charge on the plates. Okay, that's the second part of the problem. All right, question three says, how do you find the induced charges here at the surface of this dielectric? Uh, for that, I'm gonna use the electric field, okay? My electric field produced by a parallel plate, if you remember, is the charge density divided by epsilon zero, okay? Uh, so let's try to use that here and compare the case with no dielectric to the case with a dielectric. So when there's no dielectric, we know that the field is E inside. And that I would simply write as the charge density. The surface charge density is what? In this case over here, it's Q0 divided by the area. That's my sigma and epsilon zero. How would I do it on this side? Well, let's think about it. So what is the total charge here at this surface? Well, it's Q free. And again, you're gonna have some induced charges that are gonna reduce that, so it's minus Q induced, that's basically what I'm looking for here. Again, I have to divide now by epsilon zero multiplied by A, the same area. So we can simplify this a little bit. Now remember what we said, we also had another expression that my free charge was related to the charge Q naught uh, without a dielectric. And this was the relationship right here. So what we have here are two equations, okay? We're just going to combine them. I'm going to eliminate Q0 over here on the left-hand side, and I'm gonna do that just by writing it as Q free. I just calculated Q free. So I'll get rid of this Q naught is just Q free divided by the dielectric constant. And this is Q free minus Q induced. All right, so now we simply have to isolate. So you can get an expression for Q induced that looks like this. You factor it, bring this on the other side, bring this over here, <laughs> do about a week's worth of algebra, and you get one minus one over K multiplied by Q free. All right, now you simply substitute our values. So you have one minus one over 5.4, right? And Q free, we just calculated, 
uh, that was 6.16, I'll just write it as nanocoulomb right here. So you carry out this uh, multiplication and you get, again, it's going to be a little bit less in magnitude than the 6.16. So I get uh, 5.02 uh, nanocoulomb. Okay, so that's the induced uh, surface charges here uh, at the surface of that dielectric. All right, how do you find the magnitude of the polarization P for this problem? So let's go ahead and plot what it looks like, first of all. First of all, the polarization P goes from negative to positive, okay? That's a convention that's picked. Now remember, the polarization P is related to the induced electric field. The induced electric field goes from positive to negative, right? That's the convention for electric fields. So this is E induced. It's induced by those induced charges here at the surface of the dielectric. Forget about the free charges for this problem, okay? So the relationship, you can see those vectors are in the opposite direction, but here we're simply looking for the magnitude, okay? My expression is simply this, okay? That E induced at the, you know, E induced produced by those induced charges at the surface of the dielectric is minus the polarization here divided by epsilon zero, okay? It's the definition. So E induced, again, now let's just worry about the magnitude. So don't have to worry about that negative sign anymore. Uh, this here is simply going to be that the magnitude of the polarization it's going to be epsilon zero multiplied by the magnitude of the induced electric field. And again, that's just treat it like a parallel plate, right? If I only look at the red charges here at the surface, they produce an electric field that is given by the surface charge density divided by epsilon zero. So all you need to do is the magnitude of the polarization is actually equal to this induced surface charge density. Those are those induced charges that we just found divided by the area of the plates. All right, so you substitute our values. So we had 5.02 nanocoulombs divided by the area of the plates, 96.5. Um, what else? Maybe convert that to meters squared, so times 10 to the minus 4. All right, so we're going to get an answer here in nanocoulombs per meter squared. Okay, and that's okay nanocoulombs per meter squared. Uh, the value I got was approximately uh, 520 okay, uh, nanocoulombs uh, per meter squared. Okay, folks, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.